Life brings us face to face with the undeniable truth that people come and go. We bond with others, build connections, and often anchor our emotions to those relationships. Yet what happens when those bonds break? How do you handle the emotional weight when someone no longer occupies the same space in your life, or when you realize they've never shared the same emotional investment? You might ask, how do I stop caring? Or, can I truly detach emotionally without losing a piece of myself? This is where Stoicism, particularly the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, offers us a path. The Stoics were masters at understanding human emotions, not by avoiding them, but by learning how to balance their grip on our lives. Emotional detachment isn't about becoming cold or indifferent, but about regaining the power to act with clarity and inner peace. In this article, I'll guide you through five timeless Stoic rules on how to emotionally detach from someone using Marcus Aurelius's wisdom as our beacon. This isn't just about theory, it's practical advice meant to reshape the way you engage with yourself and others. Rule 1. Understand the impermanence of life. Marcus Aurelius reminds us, Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. When it comes to emotional attachments, we often cling to our personal perspective of someone, a narrative we create about their importance in our life. But the reality? All relationships are transient. One moment you're close, the next they're gone. Whether through distance, death, or the slow fade of intimacy, people leave. It may seem bleak, but this is the Stoics' first rule of detachment. Embrace impermanence. When you realize that no connection is permanent, you become more conscious of the present. Have you ever tried holding onto a handful of sand at the beach? The tighter you squeeze, the quicker it slips away. This is a natural law of life. The more we try to possess something or someone, the faster they fade. In my own experience, I had a friendship that spanned over 10 years. We shared everything, dreams, fears, late night conversations. Yet, over time, things changed. As much as I resisted, the distance between us grew. The emotional investment I had made felt like a chain holding me to someone who no longer reciprocated the same connection. It wasn't until I accepted that the friendship had run its course that I could finally release that emotional weight. Marcus Aurelius would have advised the same. Accept that things will end and you will suffer less when they do. Rule 2. Master your emotions through rational thought. There's a tendency to believe that emotions control us. You feel pain, sadness, anger, all those reactions that come naturally when you're emotionally attached to someone. But here's the hard truth. Emotions are not reality. They are a product of your thoughts, beliefs and interpretations of events. Marcus Aurelius and the Stoics believe deeply in this principle. We are not at the mercy of our emotions. Our emotions are at the mercy of our thoughts. Marcus Aurelius taught us that the mind holds the power over how we respond to the world. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength, he wrote. Emotional detachment starts with realizing that your mind can govern your emotional state. Your thoughts about someone can ignite a storm of feelings, or they can pacify that same storm. Let's say you're going through a breakup. You're emotionally shattered. You replay conversations in your mind, overanalyzing every detail, asking, why did this happen? Or, how could they move on so easily? The stoic response is to shift that focus. Instead of giving your emotions control, ask, what are the facts here? How can I think about this differently? You must choose thoughts that free you from emotional suffering not thoughts that fuel it. Think about it for a moment. When something happens, when you argue with a loved one, when you feel ignored, or when someone disappoints you, what's the first thing you do? You interpret the situation. 
you give it meaning. But it's not the event itself that causes emotional turmoil, it's the way you perceive it. Marcus Aurelius wrote, The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts, meaning that your emotions are a direct result of your internal dialogue. Let's break this down into something we all experience. Imagine you send a heartfelt text message to someone you care about, perhaps a friend, a romantic partner, or even a family member. Hours go by and there's no response. Immediately, your mind starts working over time. Did I say something wrong? Are they mad at me? Do they not care about me? With every passing minute, the emotions build. First, a slight concern, then frustration, maybe even anxiety or anger. But what's the truth of the situation? Is it the delay in their response that's causing your emotional storm, or is it your interpretation of their silence? The stoic response is to challenge that automatic emotional reaction with rational thought. What are the facts? The fact is that they haven't responded. Everything beyond that is pure speculation. Instead of allowing your emotions to spiral out of control, you pause. You recognize that your feelings of anxiety or rejection are not rooted in reality, but in your own thoughts. Marcus Aurelius's advice, question your thoughts, don't just accept them as truth. I once found myself in this very situation with a close friend. We had been discussing something important and suddenly they stopped responding. At first I thought nothing of it, but as the hours passed, I started to feel a creeping unease. Maybe they're upset with me, I thought. Maybe I said something wrong. By the time the night ended, I had convinced myself that the friendship was on the brink of collapse. My emotions were everywhere, worry, guilt, frustration. But when I stopped to examine what was actually happening, I realized something crucial. Nothing had happened. My friend had simply gotten busy. When I reached out calmly the next day, they responded without issue, completely unaware of the emotional storm I had put myself through. In a rare moment of clarity, remembered Marcus Aurelius' words, focus on what's within your control, your thoughts, your actions, not the outcome or the person's feelings. By redirecting your mind, you will learn to release the emotional turmoil. If you're still watching, please like and comment below with a sign that you've noticed in your own relationships. Your insights might help others recognize similar patterns and foster healthier connections. Rule 3. Practice negative visualization. At first glance, negative visualization might seem like a strange or even counterproductive practice. Why would anyone want to deliberately imagine losing something or someone they care about? Doesn't that just add unnecessary stress? The truth is, this stoic exercise championed by Marcus Aurelius is one of the most powerful tools to help you emotionally detach, not by hardening your heart, but by preparing your mind for life's inevitable losses. The idea is simple but profound, by imagining the worst-case scenario in advance, you lessen its emotional impact when or if it actually happens. This doesn't mean you become fatalistic or pessimistic. It means you're training yourself to accept reality as it is, rather than how you wish it would be. Marcus Aurelius wrote, Do not disturb yourself by imagining the whole of your life's troubles at once. Rather, as each arises, meet it with calmness and self-control. In essence, negative visualization builds resilience. Let's start with the practice itself. Imagine a person you're deeply attached to, a partner, a friend, a family member. Now, visualize your life without them. Picture them no longer in your day-to-day -day life. How does that feel? Uncomfortable? Painful? That's exactly the point. The Stoics believed that by facing the emotional discomfort of loss in your mind, you reduce its power to devastate you in reality. 
I remember practicing this during a time when my best friend was considering moving overseas. We had been inseparable for years, and the thought of them being on the other side of the world filled me with dread. But rather than suppress that fear, I embraced it. Every day I'd imagine what life would be like without their presence. I pictured myself going about my routines, hanging out with other friends, and finding joy in new things. By the time they actually moved, I wasn't blindsided by grief or loneliness. The loss still stung, but I had already mentally rehearsed it, and that made all the difference. Another aspect of negative visualization is recognizing that loss is a natural part of life. Everything you cherish will one day be gone, either through separation, change, or death. This isn't meant to be a morbid thought, but a liberating one. When you stop expecting permanence, you stop feeling entitled to it. And when you stop feeling entitled to something, the fear of losing it diminishes. Take relationships, for example. Most of us, when we enter a relationship, assume it will last forever. We don't plan for things to end, but the truth is, nothing is guaranteed. Rather than clinging to the false hope of permanence, the stoic approach is to appreciate what you have while you have it, knowing that it will eventually change. This shift in perspective can be incredibly freeing. I once had a relationship where I was constantly anxious about it ending. The thought of losing that person consumed me. But when I started practicing negative visualization, I stopped obsessing over trying to control the outcome. I imagined life after the relationship, and although it was painful to consider, it reminded me to be grateful for the present moment. When the relationship did eventually end, I found myself more prepared than I ever thought I'd be. The real gift of negative visualization is that it strengthens your inner resilience. By repeatedly imagining worst-case scenarios, you develop an inner stability that can't be easily shaken by life's changes. You learn that no matter what happens, you will be okay, and that's the ultimate form of emotional detachment not from a place of apathy, but from a place of strength. Marcus Aurelius frequently meditated on death, not to be grim, but to remind himself of the fleeting nature of everything. This wasn't an exercise in despair, but in preparation. If you've already imagined the loss of someone you love, then when life throws you that curveball, you won't be devastated or caught off guard. You'll be ready. In my life, I've applied negative visualization to my career, my relationships, even my health. By picturing the worst-case scenarios, I've trained myself to handle change with grace. Instead of fearing the unknown, I accept it as part of the human experience. When setbacks do occur, I don't fall apart because I've already rehearsed them in my mind. Rule 4 Focus on what you can control. One of the core teachings of Stoicism, and one of the most empowering realizations you can embrace, is that there are things within your control, and there are things outside of your control. When it comes to emotionally detaching from someone, this distinction becomes absolutely crucial. Why? Because so much of the pain we feel in relationships stems from our desire to control things that we simply can't. Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, repeatedly emphasizes the need to focus only on what is within our control, our thoughts, our actions, and our responses. Everything else, other people's behavior, the outcomes of situations, the passing of time, is outside of our control. The more you try to control what's outside your influence, the more you will suffer. Emotional detachment, then, is not about coldly distancing yourself from others, but rather about letting go of your attachment to outcomes you cannot dictate. When you're deeply attached to someone, whether it's a romantic partner, a friend, or even a family member, it's natural to want to influence how they feel about you. You want them to care about you in the same way you care about them. But the harsh truth is that you can't control their emotions. 
You can't make someone love you, appreciate you, or even treat you the way you deserve to be treated. The only thing you can control is how you respond to their actions. Take a moment to reflect on a time when you tried to influence someone's feelings or behavior. Maybe you bent over backward to win someone's affection, or you exhausted yourself trying to prove your worth to a friend who never seemed to truly value you. How did that feel? Likely, it left you feeling frustrated, anxious and powerless because you were chasing something that was beyond your control. I remember a time when I was in a relationship where I felt like I was constantly trying to keep things together. No matter how much effort I put in, planning dates, sending thoughtful messages, being emotionally available, it felt like I was always one step behind. They would pull away and I would try harder. It was a cycle of endless anxiety because I was trying to control how they felt about me. When I finally started embracing the stoic principle of focusing only on what I could control, my own actions, my own self-worth, I began to let go of the anxiety. I realized that I couldn't make them love me more or treat me better. All I could do was control how I responded to the situation, and in that moment, I chose to detach. The relief that came from letting go of that emotional burden was immense. One of the most liberating things you can do for yourself is to embrace emotional autonomy. The idea that your happiness, peace and emotional stability are not dependent on someone else's behavior or feelings. When you place your emotional well-being in someone else's hands, you give away your power. You become a prisoner to their actions, their moods and their decisions. Imagine you're in a friendship where you constantly feel sidelined. Your friend doesn't make time for you the way they used to, and you feel neglected. Naturally, this hurts, and you might find yourself ruminating on what you did wrong or why they've pulled away. But here's the key. Their behavior is outside of your control. The only thing within your power is how you choose to respond. Do you want to spend your energy chasing after someone who doesn't value you? Or do you want to focus on nurturing the relationships and activities that bring you joy and fulfillment? When you shift your attention to what you can control, your own emotional state, you begin to reclaim your power. You no longer wait for someone else's validation or attention to feel whole. Instead, you create your own emotional equilibrium, independent of external circumstances. In my own life, I've had friendships where I realized I was giving too much power to how the other person treated me. If they were distant or dismissive, I'd feel unworthy. If they were warm and attentive, I'd feel valued. It was an exhausting emotional roller coaster. But when I started applying stoic principles, I made a conscious decision to stop tying my self-worth to how others acted. I began to focus on cultivating my own emotional well-being, independent of their behavior. This didn't mean I cared less. It meant I stopped letting their actions dictate my inner peace. The ultimate goal of emotional detachment isn't indifference, it's acceptance. Acceptance that life is unpredictable, that people are unpredictable, and that no matter how much we wish we could control everything, we can't. What we can do is accept things as they are, rather than as we wish they would be. Imagine you're dealing with a breakup. You feel lost, hurt, and overwhelmed by the situation. Your mind races with questions. What if I had done something differently? Why did this happen? Can I fix this? These are natural questions, but they're rooted in a desire to control something that has already happened, a desire to reverse the outcome. Instead of tormenting yourself with what-ifs, the stoic response is to accept the reality of the situation. Marcus Aurelius writes, The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. In other words, the obstacles we face are not hindrances. They are opportunities to grow. When you accept what's outside of your control, 
you stop wasting energy on trying to change the past or influence others, and you start focusing on how you can move forward. In one of the toughest times of my life, I experienced a sudden and painful loss of a relationship that I thought was solid. At first, I was consumed by the desire to understand why it had happened and what I could have done differently. But slowly, I began to realize that the only way to find peace was to accept the situation as it was, not as I wanted it to be. I couldn't change the past, and I couldn't control how the other person felt. What I could control was how I chose to react to that loss. Instead of clinging to what was gone, I embraced the present reality and found strength in acceptance. Rule 5. Reflect on the bigger picture. When you're caught up in the emotions of a relationship or situation, it's easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. The Stoic philosophy invites us to take a step back and reflect on the grander scheme of things. Marcus Aurelius often wrote about the importance of seeing life from a broader perspective. Our troubles, fears and desires are just small fleeting moments in the vastness of time. Emotional detachment becomes easier when you shift your focus from the immediate, consuming emotions to a higher level of reflection. Ask yourself, will this pain matter in five years? Does this person truly define your entire existence? By stepping back, you begin to realize how much of your emotional turmoil is tied to temporary circumstances. When you're deeply attached to someone, it's easy to make them the center of your universe. You begin to see your happiness and sense of self-worth through the lens of their presence or absence. However, Stoicism reminds us that no single person or event should hold such power over our emotional well-being. The bigger picture is that life is ever-changing, and relationships, no matter how intense, are just one aspect of the journey. In the grand scheme of things, you are a complete individual with your own path to follow. In the heat of a breakup or emotional conflict, this perspective may seem difficult to grasp, but reflecting on the larger picture of your life helps you understand that you've survived every emotional storm you've faced so far. Life has moved on, and so have you. Think back to previous relationships or situations where you were convinced that your world was falling apart. In time, those wounds healed, and you moved forward stronger and wiser. This is the natural flow of life. When you remind yourself of this, you begin to detach emotionally, knowing that the current pain will eventually fade, just as it has before. One personal experience that taught me this lesson was when I went through a painful breakup several years ago. At the time, it felt like my entire world had collapsed. I spent weeks fixating on what went wrong, replaying moments in my head and feeling like the future had lost its brightness. But as time passed, and I allowed myself to reflect on the bigger picture, I realized that this person was not the defining moment of my life. They were part of my journey, yes, but not the entirety of it. I began to see the relationship as just one chapter in my life story, and by doing so, I started to emotionally detach. My life had so much more to offer beyond that one relationship. In Stoic practice, it's essential to understand the impermanence of all things. Everything in life is transient, relationships, emotions, situations. Marcus Aurelius constantly reminded himself that everything passes away, and what remains is how we respond to these inevitable changes. By reflecting on the bigger picture, you cultivate a sense of inner peace, knowing that life will continue to flow regardless of the temporary attachments we form. This shift in perspective allows you to emotionally detach, not because you stop caring, but because you understand that clinging too tightly to fleeting things only leads to unnecessary suffering. Ultimately, emotional detachment is not about becoming indifferent or apathetic. 
It's about recognizing that life is much larger than any single relationship, event, or moment of pain. By reflecting on the bigger picture, you free yourself from the tunnel vision that emotional attachment can create. You begin to see your life as a vast, interconnected web of experiences, rather than something defined by one person or circumstance. When you zoom out and appreciate the broader context of your life, emotional detachment becomes not only possible, but a natural and liberating process. Conclusion. Emotional detachment is a process, not a wall. Detaching emotionally doesn't mean you shut off your feelings or close yourself off to the world. Instead, it's about building resilience and gaining control over how you respond to life's inevitable changes. Marcus Aurelius and the Stoics don't offer a quick fix, but a pathway to inner peace. By embracing impermanence, mastering your emotions through rational thought, practicing negative visualization, observing your emotional reactions, and reflecting on the bigger picture, you'll find that emotional detachment is not an act of self-protection, it's an act of self-liberation. So the next time you feel yourself gripping too tightly to someone, ask yourself, do I control my emotions or do they control me? Emotional freedom awaits those who dare to let go.